Is that yours? Oh. Uh, no. It's yours. Do you want one? Uh, please, yeah. Hi. How are you today? Good. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. You're Todd. I am also Todd. It, no. Maybe if... I actually don't think I know... I've met maybe five or six total. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-mm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is auto progressing. Did it? Yeah. I'm not concerned. Okay. Okay. Um, should we get going? Sure. Wait another few minutes. Yeah. Just to see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why it's doing that. It's no biggie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's like someone's okay. Crossing frequencies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, because I'm progressing someone else's and someone else is progressing this one. That would make... Yeah, that would make sense. Okay, shall we? Okay. Um, can leave that one open in case someone wants to hear out there. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here this afternoon. My name is Todd Waters, and I am the instructional designer at Washington Community College in Bellingham, Washington. My name is Andrew Blick, and I am an instructional designer at Western Washington University, also in Bellingham, Washington. And we have been collaborating pretty consistently on a lot of different instructional design related projects and during those collaborations we have had a lot of conversations about the fact that sometimes this work can feel very isolating and it can be very challenging, very difficult depending on the support system that your institution has for you and how infrequently we in our past have had the opportunity to work with other people that are also instructional designers, but at other institutions to collaborate and see what type of work they are doing and possibly find each other's blind spots and ways in which we can support one another. And so for the last year or so, we have been pretty in pretty consistent communication, working on different projects at our institutions, but being able to really run them by one another as a method of just having some support and troubleshooting and figuring out different ways that we are able to collaborate and, you know, kind of synergize a little bit. And so that was sort of the impetus behind this uh, presentation and this workshop, really, that we want to uh, 
give all of you today is sort of pointing out the importance of working together and collaborating interinstitutionally because of how isolating this work can sometimes feel. And sometimes you feel like if your back is against the wall and you have a bunch of competing needs screaming in your face, you don't know how to accommodate that, so it can be helpful sometimes to have uh, someone else to, to turn to to assist you and help work with you. So uh, for our session today, we have these learning objectives. Uh, by the end, you'll be able to identify and classify complex instructional design requests, explore strategies for managing and processing instructional design requests, and most importantly, collaborate across, uh, across institutional peers and experience the group ideation process. So really, it's our hope today that you get to meet some of the people here in this room and you have the opportunity to talk to one another about some of the work that you're doing on your campus or at your institution and figure out possibly some connections or some ways that you can collaborate and assist one another in this process. So given that this is a roundtable session and we want to encourage group dialogue, um, I'm going to ask that people kind of cluster together um, as you are able. So, because we are going to do an activity in just a few minutes, um, and a lot of this is going to be participant driven. Um, so, hopefully, you know, we're thinking of maybe groups of four ish, um, that three to four ish, that should work. Um, so, we have like two groups of three, just counting that, and then one group of four. Or that three groups. This perfectly illustrates why it's so hard for us to work together. We're all sitting at our own tables yes. in our own space. <laughs> Okay, so <coughs> yeah. Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Pretty good. Excellent. Welcome to the team. Thank you. Okay, so Todd is going to be handing out a um, note-taking document for everyone. Um, so. Again, as we're trying to emphasize this cross-institutional collaboration, hopefully you're sitting with people that are not necessarily from your institution. Because um, there is, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the value add that we found in that type of work, um, in addition to, you know, we can collaborate with people at your institution. Um, so what we would like you to do in your small groups um, is... First, if you would identify um, a group speaker, we're going to have two large group discussion questions, um, or, or breakout group discussion questions. Um, so we'll just need, each of your groups need to pick out two people that are going to then do a report out. Um, and then we have the scribe thing in here, but everyone has their own document, so we don't necessarily need that. Um, so whoever's going to be the speak out person, make sure to just take a couple notes. That way you'll have um, some ideas for when we get to that session. Um, the other piece is that on here, a place where you can put the contact information. So make sure to pass that around, and we'll get, we'll circle back around to that at the end. So rules of engagement. Um, just to put this out there, we want everyone to keep dis discussions succinct. Um, again, most of the session is going to be devoted to you all working through ideas, projects. Uh, so also to respect the share out time of other groups and of your other group members. So. That's kind of how we're going to frame the rest of the session. Do you have any questions about the group ideation process? All right. So uh, to give you all some ideas about the types of things that we would like for you to consider talking about, I think it would make sense if we gave you some examples. So um, it, it relates directly to what you're about to do. And just to kind of get you a sense of the types of requests that we want to have you thinking about, I'm sure some you might have some from right to the forefront of your brain, but this might give you some ideas. So to give you an example of a challenging instructional design request I received, um, I was working with a language faculty member who really wanted. She she just said to me, "I want this website, and it's you know its own website on campus, right?" So it seems a naughty, that's pretty consistent. Uh, and I, I explained to her, you know, that's not how it works. You can't just take this and put it right here. She, she essentially just wanted the students to be able to access it. So uh, over a series of several weeks, I had to do a lot of that, you know, community work and really figuring out exactly what the needs were and then leveraging the tools within Canvas to make it something that looked similar to what she was looking for, but also have to have that, those, and really the difficult thing is the communication piece, right? Like figuring out how to actually let them down gently if you need to. And I have to communicate very clearly to her on several occasions that what she wanted uh, 
that was on this website, it wasn't a, something that would translate directly, beautifully, and cleanly like she wanted over onto campus. So it was a lot of meetings, a lot of talking, a lot of her phone calls, and uh, really managing the, the balance of managing the relationship with that person and retaining their trust, and also being forthright about what was possible and what was not possible. And during this whole process, having somebody that I could talk to and run templates by, uh, he's a little bit more well-versed in Canvas than I am, he's had four years of experience with it, and getting sort of a sense of how does this look, how does this function, do you have any recommendations or HTML or code or anything that could help me make this website look like it does on the Canvas page. So the example that I'll throw out there, um, we had a humanities faculty team that was working together to develop um, a suite of courses. So they're starting off with one course and they're going to be developing out an entire curriculum. Um, and I met with them repeatedly to map out their course, make sure we had everything lined up so we knew exactly where they were where they were at that point and where they wanted to go. And we spent a couple weeks doing that work and then over the summer they wanted to take it, develop out all of their content, put it into the framework that we developed as a um, you know, in this collaborative effort with the faculty. So end of summer comes by and I have my meeting with them to check in and they've developed a, you know, essentially 10 modules, each one with about 50 items. Um, it was complete information overload. They did not actually look at their um, course mapping activities that we did before they started this process. They just kind of jumped in and developed activities that they thought would be interesting um, they couldn't articulate how any of the things connected back to their objectives. Um, so it was a mess. Um, so the next process that we had to use was then to go back and say, okay, we need to start retrofitting what you've done. Because then they didn't want to redesign anything because they said, well, we developed this entire course. We developed a bunch of activities, but there's no course here. Um, so I talked with Todd about this, you know, and we talked a lot about how we train faculty on course mapping um, and how that is how that should be embedded within our professional development plans um, for faculty, especially as faculty are moving to new modalities because sometimes like in this case they were shifting from face to face to online. So their gut reaction was we need to rebuild every single thing that they're doing in the class, make those individual activities. Um, so then be able to take that information and that work and then again collaborate on resources and ideas that then we can present out to the faculty members and have a more engaged and informed discussion um, as they continue to move forward with this project. So those are two examples of the types of things that um, we're hoping start to come out of this session. Um, do you want to start the uh, first discussion? Yeah, so uh, in your groups, first individually consider something like what we talked about just now, a recent a challenging ID or faculty support request, and then take turns sharing what, what that was, what happened, uh, what was the outcome of this process that you used to assist this person, um, and then where would guidance or input from another institution or another person with expertise in the instructional design process, where would that have been helpful for you? And then uh, compare and contrast your experiences and, and have a discussion. So we're gonna go ahead and start a timer up here. Um, I think it's 12 minutes. Yep. yep, for you all to have this discussion, and then we'll report out. Yeah. Or was it just the principle of teaching? No, it wasn't. It wasn't either of those. So it was what she wanted. She wanted a video. It was more about like the Yeah, she had yeah. 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 where she was Oh, yeah. Gotcha. I see, I see. No, no, no. So it's not just your basic one. No. Oh, yeah. Thanks, you gotcha. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, then I. I... So, well, first of all, what do you. Um, what do you... Which one of these is mine? Okay. That one. Not that it matters, I guess. Oh, where is this? <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. 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 I'm so excited.
in the dark. Yeah, well, the Okay. Zero is probably a little bit. Mm. Oh, zero is probably a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That is probably exactly what was happening. Yeah. No, because it was, I mean, it's not doing it now. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is being recorded. What is session? Oh, us? From right here? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that one. <one. clears throat> <laughs> I love sharing these um, situations and everyone's like, I get it. It is. This level of conversation doesn't mean moderation. No. I know that. I mean, right. I mean, everybody can access it. Right. Sometimes it's a little patronizing. You know, I've never said that myself. I'm in the conversation. I wish that was just a style. Yeah. Unless we're talking. And if we're not talking about what we're also talking about, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were going back old school. But it works. Interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. 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 Yeah
So it covers like this. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really a whole camp. It covers pretty much this. Uh, you know, all all the the and there's I, a lot I, of different ways and philosophies that hold this stuff to cover. Uh, 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 other than uh, uh, some pretty uh, bad uh, situations uh, and stories and some bad OERs that we had a conversation director and so they recorded a video. The various people who do student services throw them together and they teach the course and each contribute a it has been a cluster. Uh, they have no idea how to teach. They have no idea how to study. It's all the same. It's all the same. It's all the same. There's no original content. They're walking into classrooms. But uh, so I think I'm going to do pronouns for the first class. I think how I represent myself, how you should represent yourself. Yeah. Yeah, uh, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. The students are so very nice. Yes, yes. Two X's yes. or one? Yes. Uh, I've never heard of this university yet. Have you met each other in class? Yes. Sometimes there's two issues. Yeah. Yeah. There's a power of what they mentioned. And we also did the same thing. They contributed the original content. I mean, it was like stunning. There's no one And then the next guy is like, hey, guys, you need to do some more work. And we're going to help you all the time. We love you. You're busy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, mine is all the time. So, okay. So, uh, some of it's based on some of it's based on us. Yeah, but uh, so, 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 but between them and the Anyway, so, but the point was is that they wanted to so see how so to see how to We've got about two yeah. minutes left, so just consider uh, what we're going to share and what we want to share. So then, um, we, so then, the, 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 the person that we need to write as a small battle. Right. Yeah, so the bachelor's equal. Well, yeah, it's not a good you know, so, the right. so, well, and I'm trying to explain that to her. Yeah. 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 So, 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 which is kind of how you just do candidates. Right. I mean, you could like do that. You know what I mean? Or something. But it's it's kind of like, oh, that's the so, yeah, so I want to do more stuff now. So I'm going to do the You know, and so. And it would be pretty good. I was actually kind of impressed. This sounds good. 
But in the instructor's kitchen. This is one of those. Yeah, so I did it as myself. But I didn't have the instructor's kitchen at all. Yeah. So, yeah. Views from the snow. Well, the thing is that actually, we can do too much if I cover everything. This is almost successful. I mean, I don't want to. 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 So you have such a great course. But to do it here, it's not hard because you do this, and the one way to do this is to have a table. Yeah. And the middle quiz will have like one side. And so you can call for action to that. You have like text like, yeah, it's a that's the whole session. Hello, and they have the word hello, and then this part, you can see the text field. And then you would have here, and 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 here, all right. So let's bring it back to our large group now. Uh, we can go around and hear from each group, and we're interested in hearing what you talked about. If any of you have a specific experience or story that you want to share, or any other thoughts that emerge from that discussion. So how about we start with you four over here and just whoever's presenting, just do me a favor to speak loudly and uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we wound up talking more about ways to preserve relationships to faculty when we're giving them advice and information about what, what they should be doing with their content. So things like if, if they're really, really hesitant to make the changes you're suggesting and they won't hear it from you. Pull in another faculty member, especially if you're in their department or somebody you know has a really good relationship with them or knows really well how to work with that content. Um, we talked a little bit the the particular experience that seems to be shared with folks uh, recording hour long lectures and then shoving them into their online courses mm -hmm. and being really hesitant to make make the changes that they need to make about that. But a lot of it really was uh, relationship with faculty focused and making sure that when we go about these things like yeah, use the help of the sandwich. And I think, right? One of the things Amy pointed out that I really loved was that you know it might feel like you you owe it to the person you're working with to give them every piece of feedback you can, but that can feel really, really, really overwhelming. And instead, to look at that, let's just pick out the themes rather than just giving them the whole. Yeah, and then remembering kind of what it's like to be a student, and if your instructor gives you just like all of the every there's everything that you have to work on, and you can't process that, right? So it's Essentially the same thing. Right? In the top three, then come back. Yes, and then come back, and then we can start getting delving in a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. Good. Good conversation. Thank you. All right, how about in the back? Oh, uh, sure. Uh, so, were we gonna summarize each person? Is that what we're doing? Sorry. Uh, the highlights from your group. Yeah. Highlights from your group. Highlights. From yeah. Group. What do you think? One of our big highlights, as you mentioned, um, working with strong personalities. <laughs> and having maybe to learn messages so aren't going to go over very well. Um, or going out of your way to design something that actually meets the need and it goes unused. That feels good. Thank you, that summarizes it. And so, in terms of collaborating, uh, did you get to talk about any of that? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, full transparency here. When Andrew and I were talking about like, what is a good, like, what would be a good thing to like attract instruction? <clears throat> you're like, oh, can we place like vent a little bit? So the therapy, right? <laughs> yeah, the group therapy session, right? Okay. Thank you. Yes, All right. we're with our own kin. You know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. We feel each other's pain. Um, I was venting mostly about a course <laughs> that's been done by committee. Okay. Uh, various people who have not have taught in the unit or in the college have been brought together to teach a college success course. Some of them have varying levels of teaching experience and usually very little, but they are in student services or some other area. Um, it was done by committee. There were a whole two meetings to do the court to revamp the course, and um, it's been an interesting little ongoing process, and so I was just kind of trying to get some feedback on how to 
stuff that back in the box kind of thing and get it so that it's actually functional. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. There we go. Todd was talking about a emeritus history professor who has some amazing content and some amazing recordings and trying to find a place where he could house those recordings, include uh, graphics, and be able to have them accessible both to students who are taking the course and um, public. And so I'm looking for a resource for that other than SoundCloud. Options out there for audio hosting. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. So, uh, something that Andrew and I have talked about a lot, we've been doing like some meta conversation, like conversation about conversations, and we have come up with this approach or model to working with instructors, particularly the ones that you all were just talking about, the ones that may have unrealistic expectations, who may be demanding, who may be, I uh, can't remember who said it, but, uh, strong personalities, yeah, which is a nice way of, of saying sometimes things that we say in other ways. Uh, <laughs> and so what, what we've come up with is this model over here, and I'm going to present this component of it, but then Andrew's going to talk about the collaborative components that bleed in. Uh, throughout this approach. And the first thing I want to point out that we noticed as we were sort of trying to figure out a model to do this is that it's very front-loaded. And as I go through this, you'll I'm hopeful that you'll sort of say, oh yeah, I completely see how that would work and how much work has to go into the very beginning before you even work on the project. Because if our lives, if our work was just like completing a little project and doing checkboxes, it wouldn't be nearly as um, challenging at times, frustrating to, to deal with and to navigate. So this is in a context where you're, where you're working with an instructor. An instructor comes up to you and they have a challenging or difficult request for you. So the first step that we have is to look at the context involved with this. And I know for my institution, I began during a tumultuous time in the e-learning department. There was a very negative viewpoint of e-learning coming in and being, because we have the person before me did the a really nice job of trying to tell everyone what they had to do with their courses, uh, which is why they lasted so long. And uh, so, so I sort of inherited this this position where there was already sort of I was met with a lot of suspicion at first. Like, is this guy going to come in here and tell me what's what, or try and tell you try and tell me what's what? Am I going to have to push back, or are they going to come in and be a team player with me? So. Anytime that I work with new faculty, I have to remember that, that that's part of the community and part of the culture and I'm trying to change that. I think so far I've been relatively successful in doing so. But really understanding that that context and is this instructor frustrated with something that's happening? But really being this all about communication, really being perceptive and thoughtful about the context that that instructor is in, and the request is going to come from that all the time. The second step is to understand their social distance, which is really just a fancy way of saying how comfortable are they with engaging with you in that process? So this is more about you doing this. I think I've heard some people talk about this during conversations, but a lot of the time, like an instructor showing you their course and their work, it's, it's vulnerable, right? They're putting themselves in a vulnerable position, and it's easy, therefore, if we communicate too directly or we don't think about how we state things for them to get understandably defensive of their course and their, and their content. Again, it's like putting yourself back in that frame of mind of being a student and turning your writing over, right? Or turning in a picture that you've drawn or a painting that you made. It's a vulnerable spot because you're opening yourself to feedback. So being really acknowledging that and kind of knowing your the people that you're working with and sort of their perception of how distant they, they kind of want to remain from this. Or if they, in other words, are they dragging, kicking, and screaming? Or are they walking in very confidently to this process with you? Then comes the part where the sort of the brass tacks determining the actual the needs of the requester, and this is much easier said than done, as we know, because like in my example, I want this here. Okay, got it. <laughs> uh, but let's let's back up and let's have a conversation about what what specifically you want. What is it about this that you want to see in this other uh, platform that, that I can try and make work for you? And really taking the time to again in communication to identify the actual needs and kind of cut through a little bit of the, I just want this to work fun, 
right? Because we can't do our job if we don't have all the information. So spending time with that person to identify exactly what they need to get done. Because you know, you know what questions to ask. They don't always know how to articulate what they need. They have this idea in their head, but you are the one who helps them get there. So you're identifying those needs for them. Then comes the, the process of uh, managing your tasks and figuring out and prioritization. I think that's a huge important part of the work that we do as we're all doubtless aware, but understanding that some projects may take a significantly longer period of time to complete and prioritizing what needs to be done and when. And that sometimes is also based off of that um, relationship that you have with that person or who it is that's asking you to, to help you out or who's asking for your assistance to do something. Uh, during the workflow process, uh, allowing yourself the time and the space to ask questions. This is really where reaching out to the instructor might be useful if you have any issues or, or questions. And I know that some of this may seem like, well, yeah, of course I would do that. But as some of us may know, that isn't the practice that everyone has and it can lead to more problems in the end. So being, again, extra communicative, really making sure and working smarter, not harder. Show them a little glimpse of something you've been doing. Like if you're making a template for them, show them a glimpse of it before you do the whole enchilada. So you can get a sense of whether or not you're going in the right direction. Because it could be, as we all know, you could be doing exactly what they want, but then they see it and they decide that it's no longer what they want. So again, working smarter, and being really diligent about that process will save you a lot of your valuable time. And then completion and using this time to really uh, continue establishing a sense of rapport and a, and a good relationship with your faculty. And it's kind of like what you all pointed out during your report outs, and I heard you all talk about a little bit too, that this job is so much about your relationships, right? It's so foundational that if you don't have good relationships with the people you support, you're not, in my opinion, you're not doing your job right. This is part of this work is having those relationships and those connections with people and being someone that they trust, that they trust that they can go to and that you can assist them with this. Because this is a very malleable type of work that we do. It's not just like, these are your specific duties. You know, I find that more often than not, my work is the other duties as a sign piece that is conveniently at the bottom of most job descriptions. Uh, and, and, and being mindful of that relationship upon completion. And, and the idea is that you are using this process to enhance your efficacy while also maintain, maintaining a strong relationship with that requester. So then shifting gears a little bit, making the model and then applying this um, interinstitutional collaboration that we've been um, playing with or you know, trying to get to um, positioned in a way that would help us do our work better. Um, what we found is, you know, when we're looking at you know, these different projects and whatnot that we have coming up, it is really valuable to have someone from outside your institution give that feedback. It works, you know, because there's other e-learning and social design folks around, but sometimes they're ingrained in what you're doing. They're, you know, they see the day-to-day -day projects, they see what you have going on, they know the faculty that you're talking about. They, you know, so having someone that's able to take a few steps back from that, um, such as someone from another institution, then you have that additional resource and someone that can kind of look at things a little bit more objectively than, um, than you can. So one of the ways you can do this is kind of think about, hey, if you have you know, colleagues from other institutions that you want to interact with, how are you going to communicate with them? Um, you know, is it going to be something where if they're in the area, you go out to lunch from time to time, if it's something that you, know, you just text back and forth, um, if you want to jump onto Slack or something like that. Um, so, Part of this is, you know, then again, once you kind of establish how you're going to communicate and also how you're going to share these issues um, back and forth, is to look at, you know, kind of what it is that you can contribute to this. So, you know, if you're thinking about this is the way I interact with faculty, that's a model that someone else may find very valuable, um, or strategies that you've come up with or things that have worked for faculty that may be a little bit more have more challenging requests or someone that, you know, there may be a personality clash and you have, you know, here's something I use to help revise how we interact with each other to make things. Go a little bit smoother or it could also be the flip side of that and focus on the failures too and say you know this is something i tried it didn't work at all because that for a colleague that's in a similar position could also be very valuable information um, other things you know lessons learned from projects those are immensely valuable for you know, doing this work and also for this collaborative process um, and then also if you have things where you know you're working on trainings rather than going at it alone where you're 
here I'm developing this suite of trainings for my institution. Look out to your colleagues and say, hey, you have similar interests, let's see if we can collaborate. So rather than you know, me designing four trainings, I'll work with Todd and we'll just develop two that are very similar that we can use at both institutions. So it cuts the amount of time down and you have two people looking at everything, making sure that everything's going to work smoothly. And then you're also, again, focusing on the inter-institutional collaboration piece uh, where both institutions then are benefiting from the work that you're doing. So, and can I just add one thing there? Yes. Other things that's been really interesting about this dynamic is that Andrew works with four-year institution and I work at community college. So even, it's even a step, even a little bit back even more because of just the, the institutional hierarchy and the policies and practices. But it's been amazing because there's some work happening at the community college or in my community college that I can mention to him and he goes like, what's that? And then I can go, oh, and then I can explain what that is and then he can incorporate that into his practice and vice versa. So in addition to just looking at instructional design projects, it also makes you just as a person and your and your uh, professional role more well-versed in a lot of different initiatives, theories, models, and ideas that you can then bring into your work. And then you know you can mention it to your faculty or to your, your department and they go, ooh, what's that? And like, right. <laughs> so we have another uh, discussion. So you, those discussions that you had to stop before you can continue those. Um, this one is focusing more on that collaborative piece. So recognizing that you're in these little pods, um, here are people that then you can go collaborate with outside of Northwest eLearn. Um, so part of the goal, one of the goals of this presentation was to position you um, to be able to then take your colleagues here as a resource and then continue to network if you find that work to be helpful. So what we would like you to do is reflecting on this model and the discussions that we've had and the discussions that you've had in your group, think about how this approach would be beneficial to you in your current practice. Um, and you can do that through the discussion of ideas that you started during the first um, ideation piece. And then after that, think about how you can continue to communicate and collaborate with your colleagues at the table, um, moving forward past Northwest eLearn to continue that work to make sure that you, know, you have additional support resources beyond your institution that can continue to enrich your practice. So we have 15 minutes for this one. Um, and this can, we'll do a share out at the end of this um, session as well. So very similar to what we did before. Yeah. Nice plug for uh, that app, that site for the Slack app. Alright, it's not public speaker by the way. Thank you. I mean, I'm surprised as well, Julia. Um, so, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Notes about yourself. Yeah. Hmm? I say I'm all right. Short way worse. I say I'm too. Right. 
So, um, we're not any part of it. Yeah. 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 Ye
find that um, that you come through some of this in this project sessions like I intended for us, which was that there's, there's just this sense of like, you got it, you got it. Like, we can be more upbeat about things, you know. Whereas the um, sessions are like, you feel like you have to like walk on eggshells because you know, like, losing your audience and things like that. Yeah. Who knows, you know, they might take it personally. No one's ever going to be happy. Exactly. Is it always the same kind of a lot of It's about the same turnout as it was the other year you came to. Usually, yeah, it's about. Right, like the sessions usually yeah. it's about 10 to 15. Probably less than those when I was doing that. They do have a lot of sessions, so that's. Yeah, they do. We're like six. Yeah. Six yeah. sessions. Yeah. Six, yeah. Six per slot. I don't know. Yeah, I that's what we always think. I hate to say that. Yeah. 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 You leave with yeah. the eavesdropping on their conversation to have funny perception of the master when you want to walk on people is that you guys have like infinite funds and um, that you are like extremely well staffed and supported um, and that you get and that everyone there gets paid way more than they do. That's like that's like the general like stereotype set here. Right. And then exempt. Yeah, I mean there's a lot of Well I looked I looked at salaries and or Eastern. It's comparable. It's it's almost sometimes the exactly the same. Yeah, no, yeah. They try to like. Yeah, I think the one exception is like when you get like so president and like a yes, and it's like, well, that, that's, or like on the faculty side, like full professor or like that type of thing. It definitely is I like to teach it for you to pay for that in a community college. But if you work at a community college and you're a tenured full professor and you like run a whole initiative or something like that, like there's a there's a per column professor and she does outcomes assessment and she I'm sure she makes good money. Probably six figures. Oh, I understand. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, maybe the Western, maybe Western's version of the class that they took somewhere else. And so really, that's that doesn't make any sense. Yep. There's a graduate student teaching in a Western. So, right. So what's better than? Yep. We have a um, early childhood ed instructor who teaches at both campuses, and she was talking, and we were talking, and she was like, yeah, so I just use the exact same uh, curriculum. And she's like, she, early childhood education, like, you should know better about outcomes and stuff. And I was like, so, but so I was like, oh, are the outcomes the same? And she was like, oh, no, those are totally different. But, um, and, like, and the, the purposes of each class is distinctly different. Like, they're called similar things, but they're not. Like, a student taking that course at Wacom needs specific things so they can move into the next one at Wacom. And vice versa, you know. And she's like, it's just, it's a, she's like, it's a dream. And I was like, I bet. <laughs> All right, about two minutes, then we'll do the report out. What? The clap things. That when people raise their hands, you have to raise your hands, and you have to flick the lights. You just, you just, as a speaker, you just project. You just, you just have to say, time is up. That's it. That's all you have to do. Alyssa, I'm doing that in the visual room. She was like, good luck. And I was like, enough of you. When I was with FCA, it was a similar thing that we had. Everyone broke out in groups. I think it was like, did it work? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Three seconds later. I guess it works. It works. Well, then stop talking. Yeah. Yeah. The reason we started the session. I'm super curious who that was. You said they were walking on. No, no, it was uh, it was Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Someone in the scene. I would ask them. I mean, they were pretty interesting. I think they might have. They have the archive going back that far. Might show it. Yeah. Interesting. So, so I don't understand. They're recording this direction. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. About 30 seconds left to finish up. Then we're gonna do our last report out. And I know. Some obnoxious sound. I'll stop it. Okay. Good job. Thank you. All right. So we just have a couple minutes left. So. Um, should I go to the next slide? Yeah, so who would like to, which group would like to report out first about some of their conversations? The happy volunteer group? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs>
Um, many of our friends want to talk to you and talk a little bit about um, how we might collaborate and one idea that is really interesting. Um, maybe having a panel in our most included class group where instructional designers um, ask questions to share anything. Thank you. Any other two groups want to go? We don't really have, have too much to add, okay. except that um, Gloria and Emily did help me with the specific problem that I was having. Oh, no, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, which, which so, so we carried over the discussion from the previous yeah. session, and, and they helped us come up with some